Instagram. What's up? Havoc Punks here. This is Jason Todd, your host for the very first episode of Punk Rock Talk. We're going to be talking with Jorge from Dead 77. Right now, you are listening to Demons, the title track off of their new album. It's on our Spotify playlist. It's called Rebellion Noise 2022. If you have not heard this record yet, you need to take the time to do it. It's about 25 minutes long in length, so it's a really easy listen and a lot of fun. We're going to get Jorge on here real soon. In the meantime, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. This party started. There he is. Don. What's up, man? Nothing much. Just chilling at work. <laughs> nice. You're at work right now. Yeah, I work from home, so I'm lucky. Yeah. There's a lot of people doing that these days with COVID and all that. It's right. really kind of changed uh, the workplace for so many people. And I kind of think it's really going to, you know, go into the future where a lot of companies are going to decide to have their employees do this. And I think it's awesome for a uh, work, life, home balance, that exactly. kind of thing. Taking care of your kids and everybody else. So it, it works out, it works out. Absolutely. Um, you have kids? I have two, a boy and a girl. Nice, what, how old? Uh, 11 and 10. Okay, so yeah. they're, they're a little older and able to fend for themselves. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice. They're super independent, which is great. You know, Totally. So they do their own thing and unless they need some help with something then they're asking for it but other than that they're they do pretty well awesome i uh just had my first born in july so she's creeping up on six months now nice congrats thank you um it's been a trip because uh throughout the whole pandemic i worked the whole time um right. and then she came a little bit early um I was on a job site in South Texas. My wife called me after a doctor's appointment she, and she said they want to deliver her in the next 48 hours. <laughs> so I packed up all my shit right then and there and right. drive back home. And uh, since then I haven't been working. It's just been about the kid. Right. Um, and, you know, doing what I can at home, working on new music and all that. Uh, and my wife just went back to work uh, a little over a month ago, but she's not doing the full five right. days. You know, she's there in the office three days a week and then at home two days a week. And it's just awesome that, you know, we're in a position now where, like I said, I think companies are seeing that their employees can still work even if they're at home and, and right. get done. So, and like you said, time with the kids, super important. Right, exactly, exactly. Well, hey, uh, thanks so much for joining me on this first episode of Punk Rock Talk. I want to get into the band a little bit. Sure. Um, and we're going to talk about, a, a, you know, a few different things. Uh, I hope you have a decent amount of time today because I wasn't planning on this being short and sweet. I really wanted to kind of get nitty gritty of things if, uh, if you have the time for that. Sure. So... Um, can you tell me a little bit about the history of the band, when it was formed and who uh, helped formed it and all of that? So, oh man, originally, I mean, it started back in like 05, 06. Oh, wow. It, it just started as something that really wasn't going to go anywhere. It was just fun to be playing some type of music and, you know, contributing to the scene and um, original, original members. Um, I mean, it, from what I can remember, it was uh, our friend Jessica on drums. Um, oh, no. Excuse me. No, no, no. That was a different. This band, I don't even know who we had on drums. But the original guitar player and bass player, 
were Brian. Um, he's out in Georgia now. And um, a friend of ours, Seb, which I'm unsure as to where he is exactly. So um, it's a... Uh, it yeah, it's 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 kind of hard to remember who was the original original lineup. Sure, but um, those two I for sure remember because we I still keep in contact with Brian all the time. So he's always been like a behind the scenes uh, uh, cheering us on, and you know we always have his support, so it works out. Cool. So how long has this lineup of the band been together? uh this one has been together so david who's our guitar player is a he's new to the band his first show back with uh, his shirt his first show with us was uh punk rock bowling okay so that you know that must have been super sweet um yeah i would think so <laughs> first show with the band and it's at punk rock bowling so um the other one um so the other two guys which is mike Mike, Mel, and Chile, our drummer, they've been with us since, I want to say, 17 or 18. Well, Mel's been with us way longer. Mel and Mike have been with the band. Once we got out of that kid phase, let's say, you know, once we put the band back together in 16, uh, the lineup was Mike, Mel, and our buddy Manny. And, uh, you know, we had, like, lead guitar players here and there, but they never or rhythm guitar players, but they never stuck. Um, this lineup, though, is for sure solid. Um, it's been fun to play uh, punk rock bowling with this lineup, and, um, and hopefully it continues to be that way. And everybody in the band right now also played on Demons? So, no. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> so, so, Mike, so Mike did. Mike played on Demons originally. Our buddy John was on drums, and our buddy our buddy Tony was on um, rhythm and lead guitar as well. Um, Mel was on Demons as well, so uh, cool. yeah. Other than those two, those two guys, yeah, they were the ones on the record playing the songs. Um, so yeah, kudos to them; they did a great job. Absolutely, all the performances on the record sound great. No, oh, thank you, thank yeah. you. That. Um, so how about you specifically? Like, what got you into punk? Uh, I I guess it was really the music. Um, it started skateboarding, and I think a lot of a lot starts with skateboarding. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the gateway to punk rock. And uh, that's how it started for me. I was just, I would skate around, because um, I grew up in, in Hollywood, so I'd skate around Hollywood and, like, that's how I just started meeting different people and they were into, into punk rock. And I'm like, Oh, it's kind of cool. You know, it's rebellious, careless, you know, just, just fun. And so that's what made me lean towards punk rock. And then ultimately, you know, I think it was kind of like, well, how do we support punk rock? Right. You know, what better way than to create music? Cause that's what, that's, what's going to keep the scene and the music going is the more bands that get involved, the more bands that create music, the longer our scene would, you know, continues to thrive. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it started with skateboarding. And on that note of bands, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, the different influences for the band? Uh, so, oh man, the band itself has so many. I mean, I could only speak for myself. Um, for me, you know, there's so many influences. I mean, there's you guys. Oh, thanks. I, I grew up, you know, watching you guys play at, um, what do you call it, in Southgate at the Allen Theater. Yep. There Love was a the theater. And um, so you guys, uh, you know, there was Clip 45, there was The Virus, uh, you know, that era of punk rock, The Unseen, you know, that was a big influence. But then as well as dipping into like the older stuff, um, you know, the Ramones. Um, so Cox Bar is a big one for me too. Love that band. Mortarhead, like there, there's just so many. Those are like the, the initial roots, right? Sure. And then it goes deeper, of course. Right, right. And then you have like newer influences, like, you know, uh, my buddy Tony turned me on to like uh, Chain Cold and like more of that post-punk uh -huh. And like, I've been just like, 
deep into that stuff right now. Um, the bleakness, there's just, there's so many bands that just created a big influence dur during this specific album. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to ask you that because it's apparent on the record that there's multiple influences. And I was pleasantly surprised at how you guys were able to capture different sounds that all seem to work together. Right. Uh, like the opening track was kind of uh, what I expected. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good to start off with something that is a little faster. Right. You know, hard hitting, uh, short and, you know, fun, easy to remember. Right. Uh, so opening track, WLF, mm -hmm. is definitely that. Right. But then by the second track, I was caught off guard completely, like in a right. good way. Right. Um, that track, like, it started reminding me a lot of uh, the Defects album, Defective Breakdown, mm -hmm. just because of some of the effects that are used on the guitars. Right. And I just thought, wow, okay. I was not expecting this at all, but right. I, I really like this. And then as the record continues, it's like you hear, you know, the same influences, but kind of sprinkled around. It, it, it doesn't get boring at all. Like you guys kept it interesting with the track listing. Right. Um, and so, uh, you know, like a, a lot of bands, it's, it's kind of like a one trick pony. Right, exactly. You hear the first song and you've pretty much heard the whole record, right. which is fine. I mean, that's that's good for some bands. Right. Um, but when you have all those variations and influences and you can um, explore them and then actually capture them. Right. I think that's huge um, because it shows that you're versatile as an artist. Right. So uh, I, I wanted to ask you about that, like with all the different influences, like, is that coming from mainly the guitarists? Like, who's the main songwriter? So I, I think it's a, I think everyone contributes their part to things. Okay. Um, Mike is definitely, um, I mean, man, that guy could pull some riffs out of nowhere. And I'm just like, whoa. Okay, so this is gonna work. But Mike also takes the time to match the riff to my vocals. So he never tries to create something that is out of, that's gonna jeopardize the vocals, right? Because you can do that. You can create a song and you're like, well, my vocals are just not gonna go with it. It's not gonna make sense. It's gonna sound horrible. Right, conflicting. Right, so he's managed to you know, kind of create this style where he writes these riffs that I've usually have never had an issue writing to. And I think that's the most important part is if you have that person that can write these riffs um, and you could put lyrics to it without a problem, then you have something good going on. And that's what happened with, with On Repeat. I shit you not. He sent me a riff at like 11 or midnight and he's like, dude, check this riff out. It sounds dope. I, I want you to see if you could write to it. That same night, I wrote the entire song in bed next to my wife. And she's like, how many times are you going to listen to that thing? And I'm like, well, it sounds great. Like, I can, I can write to it. And, um, you know, and then once I heard it more and more, I'm like, okay, but now I hear someone else singing with me. Mm -hmm. And that's when I decided, you know, well, this is going to be a long shot, but I'm going to ask Dave if he wants to, you know, jump on board and knock this track out with us. And, you know, he was great enough to, to do it with us. And I think that really created a two dynamic to that song. And it, it ended up sounding awesome. Absolutely. And for anybody that is watching this, that isn't familiar, uh, the song on repeat that he's talking about, it features David Rodriguez of the casualties, starring wolves, crumb bums, uh, who's, got a very identifiable voice in punk rock. Uh, I, I think he's an excellent selection for that mm -hmm. song. Um, and, you know, scrolling around on your Instagram, the band's Instagram, 
uh, I noticed that he was in the studio with you guys working on that. So it's not like you guys did it in separate studios. He was there yeah. to lay that, down his tracks with you guys, right? right. That was luck, man, because um, so that song actually was wrapped up in February of 2020. Okay. So right before the pandemic, mm -hmm. like literally weeks later, everything shut down. So we we were just fortunate enough, you know, right place, right time. And we were able to nail that thing down. But how did that come about since he's in Texas and you guys are in California? Did you just contact him and say, hey, man, we've got this song. I can hear you on it. Are you interested? And yeah. he just said, sure, and just decided to go out there? Kind of. So it ended up kind of working out like that. Like, um, so we've always had a relationship with uh, Starving Wolves and, and, and Dave. So... Uh, you know, when when I heard the riff and the song, I was like, dude, this kind of sounds like crumbums. We can make it work. If we get a guest vocal in there, like, it'll sound really great. So, you know, I sent Dave this phone riff, you know, and I said, you know, I hear your vocals in this. Tell me what you think. And he was like, it sounds great. Like, yeah, I want to do it. I'll be a part of it. So, you know, he flew out as soon as he could and we hit the studio with Paul Miner, who, man, if there's anyone, I, I would go back to Paul Miner. He, he's definitely, he made our album sound amazing as well. His work yeah. is phenomenal, so. He's worked on a lot of projects, man. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, the record does sound really good. It's, it, it captures that live energy, mm -hmm. um, but still sounds produced but not overproduced so i really like that um another interesting thing about that song anybody that listens to it the at the tail end of it david does this scream yeah that is so long and anybody that's a vocalist especially knows that in order to hold the scream that long it requires a lot of breath control yep how many times did he have to do that in the vocal booth to nail it? Oh, he's a one hitter quitter. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh, awesome. Hey, dude. Okay. Yeah, he was. That was the one time he he yelled like that, and that was it. It was the first time go. Did you guys know he was gonna do it? No. <laughs> no. So you guys were just standing there listening to it and just shitting bricks. Yeah, and I was like, wow, this it just sounds so good, like. That song is by far my favorite. The lyrics are my favorite. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's perfect, man. Cool. I, I couldn't have asked for it to come out any better. Awesome. Yeah, so I just want to tell people that that song is also featured on our Spotify playlist. We picked three songs off right. of your record. Uh, Demons opens it, and then On Repeat is after that. Mm -hmm. And then Self Destruct is mm -hmm. the third song we chose. Can you tell us a little bit about that song? Uh, about Self-Destruct. So yeah. Self-Destruct is um, this whole album, Demons, I mean, it could have like several meanings. The main meaning to this album specifically is just like our mental health, right? We wrote this album during a, a, a pandemic. I mean, none of us had lived through one before, right? Right. So, Mental health was a big issue for me, um, you know, because I I have depression. Um, so, and and so do a couple of the other guys in the band. So we all kind of decided at once, like, okay, we know what we're going for. And so each song represents a certain meaning. And self destruct um, is mainly about yourself and uh, you know how pretty much you can destroy your, yourself. You're your own worst enemy, right? Yeah. So that's pretty much what that song is about. Um, you know, thrown with a little bit of that post-punk feel. It almost doesn't even sound like it. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm self-destructive. There's no control. You know, I've lost all hope. It's a vicious circle. Because you go, it, if you look at it, if you know, if you suffer from mental health issues, it's really you're living the same thing every single day, right? right? And then you have that control of you're either going to go down the wrong path or you're going to go towards a better path. And, 
you, these things just it's it just keeps going round and round so i love that that's what the song is about um mental health is such an important topic mm -hmm. and i feel like our generation um you know i'm an older millennial right um we we kind of grew up in in this era of it being taboo to talk about mental health right which is such fucking bullshit you know we're all human and we all go through things we all have traumatic experiences in life that we have to deal with and those things impact our mental health right and the worst thing you can do is bottle it up and not talk about it mm -hmm. and so i love that we're living in what feels like to me this new era of hey let's put a spotlight on mental health right let's talk about it let's work through it um so that humanity can be better society right. can be better uh i mean people like you and i we're the future mm -hmm. and if we can get a good grip on our own mental health, it's only going to better serve society as we grow older. Exactly. Um, yeah. The most recent new single that we put out uh, is called Only Escape. And it's about that same thing. A family friend of, uh, of ours committed suicide on Christmas right. Eve. Uh, and he was an older guy. He was a boomer. Um, but he had all this trauma, uh, from being in the military that never got addressed because mm -hmm. the VA is a fucking joke. Right. And, you know, he already had certain limitations mentally mm -hmm. and right. then trying to jump through all these hoops to get the help that he needed through the VA not happening no and i can and, to this. i i'm actually i deal with the va for my mental health so i know exactly how they are right it's and, like anything else with right. the va to get anything right. accomplished Any all this paperwork right you, you know it's it's very taxing yep mm -hmm. 100 <clears throat> um so kudos to you for uh writing about that and making that such a uh, important topic on the record. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we tried. I mean, it's all personal experience, right? You can only write about what you know. Um, and that's why it's, we take a different approach, I guess, to punk rock too, because we, I'm not going to sing about something that I don't know about, you know? Mm -hmm. So same with on repeat. I mean, if you really listen to the lyrics behind that, you know, the second verse was, really dedicated to my brother he committed suicide a few years back and um so i took that experience and threw it into the second verse uh, so everything on that you know on that record is somehow very personal to one of us at least you know mm -hmm. and uh so yeah yeah I, i'm sorry to hear that um that kind of losses brutal mm -hmm. um but i'm glad uh to hear that you know you take your mental health seriously right um i assume that you're in talk therapy i am yeah oh yeah <laughs> that's made a huge difference in my life also um i for me a lot of it started with just getting sober mm -hmm. and the same time that I got sober was the same, like literally that same week was when I also got into therapy. And that's been a little over three years ago now. And my life is on a completely different trajectory. Right. Uh, but, you know, it, it's taken that work of uh, going through talk therapy and um, realizing the importance of my own mental health and prioritizing it. Right. You know, it's like, uh, it's so easy to put others ahead of yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, at least for me, it is. Um, but I've learned through therapy that there are certain things that 
are non-negotiable for me. And music is one of those things. That is my creative outlet. Yep. And it is what recharges my batteries. It's what uh, allows me to thrive in my life. Right. And without that, then I'm just a fucked up mess. Mm -hmm. um, but prior to talk therapy, I felt selfish if I was working on music and not doing something else around the house or, right. or whatever. Um, but I wouldn't have had that realization if I hadn't uh, taken the time to focus on working with a therapist. Exactly. And so that self-discovery, I think, is just one of the many benefits mm -hmm. uh, to, to going through that process of talk therapy. Right. Speaking of therapy, did you know that the Dollar Tree sells personal lubricant? No. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. How did, how did you come across that? <laughs> I was in there one day. <laughs> I was in there one day and I was looking for toothpaste, you know, and something else on like the self-care aisle. Right. You know? uh, and I noticed right next to like where they sell um, like jock itch cream and <laughs> that stuff, they've got warming lubricant. Oh man! And I was like, <laughs> "Wow, I have no idea, uh, so, dude." I just stocked up on it. I was like, "Yeah, let me just <laughs> fill a basket." Because, <laughs> dude, you buy that like at Walmart or whatever. It's almost like four bucks for a little yeah. tube. It's expensive. <laughs> yeah. So next time you're at the Dollar Tree, pick some up. You know, yep. because Add it to my you place. never know when when you're gonna have an an intimate. Yep. Moment, and you're like, let's just whip this out. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, I want to talk a little bit more um, about the record. Um, there's some old songs on mm -hmm. the record, too. So there's, uh, if you guys go to uh, Dead 77 Spotify, you can see in their discography, they've got... Uh, an EP and some other singles uh, in addition to this record. And some of the songs that are on this record, there's different recordings yep. of other songs. Can What made you guys decide to, to use some of those songs on the new record? Um, I guess just to give people a taste of the progression that we've made in the last four years. I think it's been four years, maybe five. We'll go with so just to give people a taste of the progression that we've made from the Die Young EP to Demons, uh, because if you listen to the songs, they sound so different that it, we almost brought like a new energy of life to those two to those two new songs. I mean, two old songs. They did like they. Le I think legitimately they sound a hundred times better than what they were originally. Now. It's like, it's almost like we revamped the energy to them. Sure. Yeah, uh, one of those songs, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the title is What's Love? Mm -hmm. uh, I like both versions of that. Right. Um, but that one's that's a little bit more of like a rock and roll vibe compared yeah. to the other songs. It features a lot of guitar solo work mm -hmm. uh, that is super catchy. Um, but that was one thing that I thought was really cool that you guys decided to take some of the older songs. And like you said, you just put new energy into them. Right. Um, is there one of those that you feel uh, like you just favor over the other? Um, so I like Teenage Kicks just because I love that high energy drum roll into the song. Mm hmm. But What's Love is, I think, people's personal favorite song because that one has always been one that we get feedback on because I think it sounds so much more, it sounds so much more different than the other songs we have. Yeah. Well, I think it kind of piques people's attention more. Um, but, I mean, I love Teenage Kicks. I think it's, you know, the octaves right at the beginning give it, like, that power and the drum roll, like, sets you up for the power following, you know? Mm -hmm. So I definitely... Teenage Kicks is definitely my my personal favorite. 
What's Love is definitely like right there. Cool. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the live experience. Mm -hmm. um, you guys just played Punksmas. Oh, so I had to cancel that one. Um, oh, we didn't, didn't cancel it. I didn't realize that. Yeah, we, we canceled. I had a family emergency, so I couldn't make it out. Um, but that would mean that our last performance was Punk Rock Bowling. Okay. So that's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, no, no. We just played with the Potato Pirates in Dallas. Okay. In and how was that? Oh, it was amazing, man. It was It was everything that I hoped and was hoping it would be. It was. It was a great um, turnout by the Dallas punk scene. Um, you know, Scott Beggs, who, who works uh, Three Links, he's a great dude, took care of us. Um, so yeah, it was, it was great. Cool. Um, I'm gonna look at some of these questions that people have submitted. Excuse me sure. while I put on my glasses and look like an old man. <laughs> oh, it says no questions yet. I thought I, yeah, here we go. Let me look up here. Shove it tacos. We need more skate, por skate park punk rock shows. Bringing it back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Quite a few people have chimed in, but not really. Oh, here we go. <laughs> MU's199 says, why is Dismantled Records the hardest working label in the business? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tackle that? Um, Kurt is definitely hardworking, man. Um, he has been through the ringer with us and um, takes my phone calls at weird times because he's three hours ahead. And, you know, I'll call him randomly and I'm like, dude, where's the record at, man? And, you know, but he's super supportive. He's super, like, this guy is great, man. Like if there's so I would I would love to work with him uh again after this record. He's easygoing, you know, doesn't really question anything you do. He's just like he's he's just like go for it, dude. Like I trust your judgment. Um he loves the record, which makes it even better, right? Because totally how, do, how are you gonna work with the label who's just like oh, I, whatever, man, just put it out. He genuinely loves the record. He's been supporting the band as much as he can. You know, he came out to punk rock bowling. Um, so he's, he's been, he's been great, man. He's been seeing this record through even with our, you know, demands of colored vinyl and <laughs> we want this and we want that. And, you know, he's been like, Oh, I'll make it happen, dude. Even if I have to work an extra shift, I'm like, so I'm like, that's dedication, you know? So totally. he's, He's been great and I think he supports the scene, you know, very well and you know, I'll, he's he definitely has our support, man, you know, and it's all about supporting this, you know, the smaller labels or someone who's trying to become, you know, a working label and I think he he has what it takes to grow definitely. So, I don't know him personally. Um I've seen Dismantled Records on social media of course um and then the other day i can't remember if it was on uh what something that you guys posted or something we posted or whatever but he had commented uh and said some, i can't i can't remember if he commented this or if he messaged it to us mm -hmm. but uh he said that a long time ago i think he said he was in high school or something he sent us like two or three bucks through the mail and we sent him, you know, some pins and patches and whatever. And he was like, dude, that was just so cool. Like that, you know, you guys hooked it up. And I was like, that's rad that, you know, we made some kind of impact on you back then. Right. And look where he's at now and what he's doing now. Right. You know, that's just, I don't know. I think that's a, a cool thing about the punk rock community is like when it, when it impacts you, it carries 
on throughout your life. Right. One way or another. Um, but yeah, he was like, man, I'd love to work with you guys and, and uh, you know, I'll carry your record or whatever. And uh, he said, I've been working with Voltage Records too here and there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, uh, maybe we can work something out. But you guys have this record out on Dismantled for the U.S. You also right. work with Voltage for Europe and Kids Union in Asia. Yep. So tell me a little bit about how you how that came to fruition were you approached by each label um so with martino at voltage um i knew he had he had helped us out with monster squad i think in 2018 in europe so i was like well you know I'll, i'm gonna see if i could reach out and maybe he'll take a listen and maybe he likes it maybe he doesn't right but at least i tried so you know i i I, I hit him up and I was like, hey, dude, can you listen to our record and let me know what you think? We're trying to get it pressed. And like, he listened to it and he's like, I, I really like it. I want, I want to press it and this is what I can do for you guys. And, you know, we'll go from there. And so, you know, here we are. The unfortunate part of things, it's just like, you know, I'm sure you guys know the pressing plants are backed up. Right. Uh, so supply chain right now is horrible. And so right. we do a little, you know, we've run into a few obstacles, but um, again, Dismantled has been there to try and help in any way possible, you know, whether that means, you know, Voltage is using st the stampers from the U.S. press, but where he's like fully on board with helping, you know, Voltage out with, whatever we need to make sure that that record gets sent out to the EU. Um, with, with kids union records, I think it just started with the uh, compilation. Yeah. Um, you know, I was like, well, you know, how do you guys feel about doing our full length in, in Asia? And they're like, we're totally, we're on board. We, we really like the band. Let's, let's work together. Um, so they're going to be doing it. I think CD is what they're doing. Yeah. So, um, It'll be great, man. I mean, with this album, we just wanted to tackle as many parts of the world as we could. Um, right now, I think we're going to start working on doing some translation for for the tracks to go to um, Latin America, so that we could start pulling in the crowd from you know Central North America, South America, and um, even Europe, like Spain and um, specifically Spain. So we'll we'll see how that that goes but yeah right now that's our next focus is you know doing a full translation um starting with an ep and then seeing how that uh, how that goes and then if that's successful enough then doing a full length in spanish wow very cool mm -hmm. yeah so to touch on what you said uh for people that don't know vinyl is like a bitch right now yeah we've had so many people message us and be like, when's the new record coming out? And we're like, oh, fucking no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I would love to be able to give you a definitive answer, but right now it's anyone's guess. Yeah, yeah. And especially that, with everything that's happening with COVID, like there's still, you know, right now there's all these rising cases and schools are shutting down. It's like, how's that gonna affect the workforce again and all that? Yeah, it's very frustrating. So uh, for all of you out there that are wanting new records from bands, please be patient. <laughs> yes, and we're we're trying to be patient with, with, with Dismantled, too. He feels it all the time. I'm like, where are the records at, man? Right. Like, Six weeks. <laughs> so that brings me to another topic. Uh, you guys have released this record digitally. Mm-hmm which I think is a good call. But there's a lot of bands that are either just doing physical copies, vinyl or cassette, um, or some bands that are only releasing music on Bandcamp. They're not uh, submitting music to streaming platforms. Uh, and from my perspective, I, I don't know why they're going that route. Um, 
but I'm curious what made you guys decide to go ahead and release it on streaming platforms. Uh, that's the future of music, man. You got to grow as, as things grow, you got to grow with it or you're going to get left behind. Yep. If, I mean, we battled internally as a band trying to figure out when we were going to release the album. Um, most of us were just like, no, let's just release it. Let's just release it, you know, on digital. We'll figure out the vinyl later. And luckily, like, as soon as the test press came in, you know, I was like, Kurt, can we go ahead and just blast this thing on, you know, on uh, on the streaming platforms? He's like, he was like, yeah, go ahead, man. We're good. So there won't be too much of a time, you know, different or too much of a gap in time with the digital and the vinyls coming in. And, um, but I mean, I had an itchy trigger finger, man. I was ready to, <laughs> I was just ready to let it all out. Cause I was like, man, this is so good. And not to even toot my own to my horn, but it, I was like, this is probably the best work we've done. And we're like, just holding on to it. Right. Um, but I'm happy we did. It, it worked out in our best interest. Cause we did a couple of, uh, you know, we did on repeat as a single, we did civilizations dying as a symbol, as a single, so we kind of created that, you know, that little wave before the big rollout, you know, so um, it, it, it worked out. Why do you think some bands are not releasing their music, punk bands specifically? Because I've seen it in, in most other genres where it's like they put out a record and it's on streaming right away. Yeah. Uh, but with punk bands, I, it seems like most of them, if they're putting it online at all, it's just on Bandcamp and maybe YouTube. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I've never really, I mean, I wouldn't know because I don't use YouTube or Bandcamp. I strictly use Spotify, iTunes. Uh, and it's easier for me to like, because I track most of all the listenings on for the band. So for me, it's easier to track uh, Spotify listens and, and followers and monthly listeners than it is to, you know, try to figure out what's going on on Bandcamp or soundcloud or anything like that right so and then yeah that's another thing i i think a, a lot of bands don't know and fans definitely like they're not aware i don't i don't think right they're, they're aware of how much control uh or not necessarily control but how much information is provided to you with the numbers when you're on spotify um I hate it in terms of, uh, I mean, it's killed the record business mm -hmm. and the artists are not getting a fair cut. No. So I hate that. Um, but I love the amount of information that it gives you it, because it can tell you who is listening where, what the demographic is. Uh, and that, it, it, knowledge is power, right? Yep. And so with that information, you know, okay, well, this is kind of who we're attracting and we should focus more on that age group if we're going to be doing an ad or something. Mm -hmm. um, but it also lets you know who you're, you're not hitting and right. maybe you want to work a little harder for that audience. Right. Right. To try and grow it. So uh, another serious question for you, who would win in a fight? Power Rangers or Ninja Turtles? Oh, Ninja Turtles, dude. Dude, you're my man. <laughs> of course. Did you grow up on that stuff? Like, uh, when I was a kid, like, Ninja Turtles were, you know, huge. And on Saturday morning, cartoons. Um, and then, like, uh, when the Power Rangers came out, I think I was, like, middle school or maybe – late elementary i can't remember i used to watch right. tv in the morning just before going to school and i remember the first time the power rangers came on i was like what the fuck is this <laughs> why does it look terrible <laughs> yep did you grow up on that stuff too yeah i grew up on ninja turtles man they were actually like i was still like a kid i think i was maybe like five when i started so like my grandma has pictures of me like just um I know they did a revamp of it, but it was the uh, the truck that the Ninja Turtles used to drive in. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I, I have, like, pictures of me playing with, like, the Ninja Turtles. And, like, I had, like, the truck. And, like, 
it was it was cool man i i wasn't too into the power rangers to be honest i was definitely more into the ninja turtles right on same here man i've got a lot of action figures and stuff of that from when i was a kid i still have all of that stuff oh that's awesome yeah um let's see if we can find some more questions from whoever's tuning in let's pull that up here uh Punk or Catalog says, how did you guys get hooked up with Evacuate Records and why the switch to Dismantled? Oh, that's a good question again. <laughs> so um, how did we, so what was it again? He said, how did you guys get hooked up with Evacuate Records and why the switch to Dismantled? Um, so... We got hooked up with Evacuate Records through our friend Evan Kane, who used to play uh, bass in Evacuate, and uh, our buddy Riff, who was our engineer on Die Young. Uh, they both um, spoke to Mike Virus and showed them the record, and uh, you know Mike digged it, so he gave us the chance to put it out on Evacuate. Um, in between that buffer though, we were on slope records for, I mean, two years maybe. Uh -huh. And that, you know, the pandemic kind of slowed everything down, but, uh, we were on slope records. We did like a two song EP and then we made the switch to dismantled. And the reason we made the switch to someone like dismantled was because, we wanted ultimate control of what we were doing with the record. Um, when it comes to, you know, bigger labels or, you know, not necessarily any of the ones we've dealt with, but just in general, you start to lose that power, right? As an artist, you know, you, you have to follow certain rules. You're going to get this for, you know, X amount of money and blah, blah, blah. And dismantled their, we had the pleasure of, you know, I had the pleasure of telling Kurt, like, hey, this is what I want, like, and this is what I need from you as a label. You know, I need you to shop this thing out anywhere and everywhere you can, um, you know, and then we'll do our best to sell it at shows. Because realistically, you're going to sell records at shows. That's going to be your moneymaker, right? So, um for for us, it was really like we just wanted distribution, like 100% distribution, it going everywhere. And, you know, Kurt has that, the, the connections to get stuff, you know, here to get stuff moving in the States. You know, he can get things moving in Canada. So that's why we were, that's why I was very comfortable with working with Dismantled uh, because, he, like I said, he didn't have very many demands that I, I don't even think he had any demands. I think, you know, one of the things was like, Oh, well, do we really need a trifold for your album? You know, cause it's going to cost more money. But at the end of it, we were like, we, we don't need all that, you know, just the record speaks for itself. And if you're trying to add all this crazy, like um, aesthetics to it, then what are you really selling? You know? So um, we decided to go very, you know, simple and and um, hopefully the record speaks for itself. But they, I think they're all colored vinyl. I may be mistaken, but I think at the end of the day, we agreed that we were going to just go with a bunch of colored vinyls. Yeah, I think you're right, man. You got to let the music do the talking. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like there's a lot of cool things that you can do. Uh, with a release, especially on vinyl, like a gatefold. Right. But it's so expensive. It is. And like, why? You know, like any bands out there that are, you know, thinking about doing that, I would encourage them to stay away from it. You mm -hmm. know, keep things simple. Uh, yeah. If your songs are strong, then that'll get people talking. Exactly. It's not going to be because you have something, <laughs> you know, some cool layout for your record. Right. Right. I have come across some records like that that are in my collection that I absolutely love because of that. But I fell in love with the music on that record first. Right. Exactly. You know, that that was way more important than how cool the, the artwork was or whatever. Right. Uh, you mentioned Mike Virus. Shout out to him. 
Uh, we have a long, long, long relationship with Mike. Um, I mean, we would not be, I mean, I don't know if I could say this definitively, but he was pretty detrimental uh, in the beginning of things for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't remember the, the specifics. We met him at some show. Right. And at the time, <clears throat> we had already recorded our own uh, seven inch EP that we also uh, burned CDs for. So when you bought the vinyl, you got to burn CD too. Nice. Because we just thought like, you know, at the time, that's what everybody listened to music with was CDs. Right. And we wanted the music to spread as much as possible. And, you know, people didn't have a record player in their car. <laughs> right. right. Um, so at some show, we gave him a copy of it. And uh, that same night, later that night, he called us and was like, yo, I've got a show happening with my new band. And, and I, I think it might have been their first show or one of their first shows for sure um, in San Diego. And it was with the virus. And he was like, would you guys be down to play? We we're like, why the fuck would you even ask that? Of course, yeah. we're down to play. <laughs> yep. um, and so uh, that show, we met those guys in the virus. And then somehow between then and like later, I think like the, the following year, uh, someone from that camp, I don't know if it was Mike from uh, Cheap Sex or if it was one of the guys from the virus, they put the CD and and the seven inch in the hands of Dave Punkor. And then the next thing we know, we're getting emailed by Punkor about like, hey, you know, can you send us more shit? And we're like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but none of that would have happened. I, I, I mean, I don't think it would have happened if it weren't for Mike advocating for us. So we love that guy. Uh, Cheap Sex, they've got some dates coming up. They're going to be doing uh, Launch Off to War in its entirety. Have you seen that? Yeah, that's badass, man. Yeah, I think it's really awesome, man. I'm glad that those guys are getting active again. Yeah, and that's an album I grew up on, so it's 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 awesome. And I think, actually, my buddy Bo, Bo Austin played, I think he played guitar on it. So yeah, that... Bo was in the band for a short period. He was one yeah. of our, uh, well, I shouldn't say was. He still is one of our friends. Right. Uh, and he actually... Um, he was one of our roadies on our first tour. No way. Yeah. That's Both awesome. cool, man. Yeah. He's really um, cool. But yeah, that, that record was a big deal when it came out. Uh, and we did a lot of shows with Cheap Sex back then. And you mentioned the Allen Theater. Dude, we packed that place the fuck out time after time with those guys. And it was so much fun. Yeah. And then we had the Knitting Factory, too. Right. Um, back then, the knitting. I think we even had that little spot in North Hollywood, the CIA. Oh, yeah, dude. We played that place several times, too. That, yep. What a weird place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that place was like a freak show museum. Yeah. And they had like the weird... I think he had a clown in a casket, too, or something. Yeah, all kinds yeah. of weird stuff. And then like he had the projector playing like some weird art porn. Yeah. <laughs> all was... kinds of craziness but dude cia and and uh the allen theater two venues that were like they were in it for the music and for the bands and every time we played those places they did not hesitate to pay us and pay us well right and that's like such a flip compared to nowadays it's like so many promoters out there are like they want bands to pre-sell tickets and mm -hmm. you know they don't want to put forth the effort to promote the show themselves yet. They have the audacity to call themselves a promoter. Right. Um, I, I hate that shit, man. Uh, but man, just a, a lot of cool stuff back in the day with those venues, man. LA staples. Yes. Yep. Uh, speaking of shows, you guys, uh, I've got 40 fest coming up next, correct? Hey, yep. Yep. In about a week and a half, I think. If I'm not mistaken. So ne not this Saturday, but next Saturday. 
we'll be out in uh, Atlanta. Are you guys just flying out? Oh yeah, we're flying out. And do they have a backline that they're providing for you guys? Oh yeah, yeah. Nice. So we're, we're solid. We're we're flying very uh, minimal, so it'll it'll be great. Awesome. And then uh, you guys also got Rebellion Fest. Oh yes, that's like our second home, man. I love love Rebellion. Uh, I've made it a point to like try to get on Rebellion every year since we've played. Uh, it's just a great experience. It it feels more like it feels more like family than a show. It's like I don't know. Everyone there is just great. Yeah, man. Uh, that's something that we'd love to play. Uh, I don't know that. I I think it's really doubtful that it'll happen this year. Uh, but maybe next year. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Martino has reached out to them, but I don't know. That lineup seems super stacked. And, you know, because they had to cancel just like everybody else. Right. And so they got all these bands confirmed from, you know, the last two years plus new bands. So right. I, I can't even imagine how crazy that's going to be, but I'm sure it's going to be fucking awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm excited, man. I hopefully with everything with corona and everything just chills out by the time, you know, rebellion happens. What's your favorite show so far? Uh that we've played personally? Yeah. <sighs> man. So, I'm going to have to break it into two categories. Okay. Um so punk rock bowling for the experience definitely um then the dallas show with the potato pirates this year have been for i mean coming back from we're talking pandemic those two shows were definitely the best uh potato pirates because there's nothing better than getting to jam you know with with friends and you know having a good time and you know it being a great show it yeah. just things even better so somebody just commented, they said Fi Rock, which if you don't know, it's the same thing as Punks Unite Fest. Are you guys playing that this year? Do you know? No, I don't think so. I haven't heard anything. Um, but when we did play, it was fucking off the chain. Um, great fucking, everyone there was just amazing, man. Um, different times too, you know, everyone right. was sweating, wet. It was, it was, it was a, it was a great lineup. So that, you know, Fuck You We Rule was definitely, before the pandemic, was one of the best shows that we had played, for sure. Yeah, so we got confirmed to do that Punks Unite Fest, and then the pandemic started, and we were like, oh, shit. <laughs> right. Uh, but the last time that I heard anything, uh, Tony had renewed the contract with the venue, but I don't know if there's any, been any more movement beyond that but as far as i know we're still confirmed for that uh as well as the other or most of the other bands that were confirmed for it back in 2020 so right. we'll see but uh man if you guys aren't on that that's a bummer because right. we'd love to play <laughs> with you guys sometime you know in the near future yeah definitely so would we i mean um i think i've hit up tony but uh, I don't know. I think mm, he might have mentioned most of the bands are reconfirmed. Re I don't know. But if Tony's listening, we're ready to go. <laughs> For sure. Same here, man. We can't <laughs> wait to start playing again. Yeah. It's, it definitely, you know, the last few shows we've had, it, it felt, I mean, it's a little nerve wracking, right? Because you're like, oh, shit, pandemic, COVID. Right. Um, but the shows have been great, man. I mean... It's it's been great. We've been very picky choosy as well, though, um, just because we don't want to risk getting sick either by playing too much. Um, so, and you know, we just been, yeah, we'll do this. Maybe we won't do that kind of deal. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're ready for twenty twenty two. Hopefully, if you know, COVID chills the fuck out and leaves us alone, um, we're ready to be on the road and playing shows. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard because we're kind of in this uh, this very interesting place right now 
because like you said before, you know, none of us have lived through a pandemic before. Right. And of course, everyone's health, their safety should be the first priority. But it's like, well, how do we navigate through that? Because it's constantly changing. Right. And I mean, I, I base the majority of my decision making off of what I hear from my MD. Right. And the last time I was in there, which was not long ago, it was a couple of weeks ago. And I asked him his opinion. He was like, you know, the virus is doing what it's supposed to do. Viruses mutate. And as they mutate, they become less threatening, but more transmittable. Right. And so I think we're kind of reaching this point where like, okay, it's not as severe to have it now as it was two years ago. Right. Um, but it's also just becoming more common to catch it. Yes. Yes. And I mean, it's not going away. It's going to be here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's like, well, how does society pivot? Because there's so many conflicting opinions about being vaccinated. Right. Um, but it's like <clears throat> every other uh, pandemic in, in the past, whether it's, you know, swine flu or whatever. I mean, nobody's planning for that shit. It happens. And then they're like, oh, fuck, we better get a vaccine together. Right. You know? And this is no different other than the fact that it is just been spread all over the world. Right. Um, and so I'm with you. I, I think like moving forward, it's like, how do we, how do we do shows and keep them safe for the bands and, and the fans? But it's going to be impossible to do them and for no one to catch it. I, I mean, I don't know how, how it will, I don't think it's ever just going to go away. No, I think it'll end up being like a, like a cold or a flu every right. year. I, that's where we're at. And the sooner we accept it, I think the easier it'll be on us too, you know? Totally. Uh, it's something that, like you said, I don't think it's going to go away. I, I don't think so. Um, I mean, I would love for it to go away completely. Right. You know, the trend, you know, if you're following the trend, it doesn't look like it is. Yeah. Uh, let's look again here through the comments and, and see. Are you still good on time? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Let's look through these comments again and see what people have been saying. Uh, if there's any questions here. Uh, a lot of people agreeing about the CIA and the Allen. See the Ninja Turtles Pogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I played Pogs when I was a kid. Yep. I remember political suicide playing in the Mosaic Cafe back in the day. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't. Was, I don't think was, we ever even played that place. Yeah, that place was cool. Um, that was uh that was my that was my like high school band that was like before dead 77 even got together or was even a thought that's where that's that's the drummer i was talking about so jessica played drums in that band okay so dismantled records commented <laughs> Thank you, Jason and Jorge. Make him tell a clit house story. Let's hear it. Uh, oh, man. That's funny. That's kind of out of the blue. So, yeah, I looked at the clit house for a little bit. Um, I mean, it's just wild parties, man. I mean, right. what, what one story can there really be? Um, there's, I mean, I'll put it this way. A lot of sleepless nights and a lot of partying and a lot of 
I don't know how I made it to work and kept a job while I lived there. For <laughs> that's that's really the extent that I could go into um, into those stories. It, it was definitely the party house. Um, I mean, I remember having a Halloween party, and I'll keep this one. This one's okay to tell because it's not very graphic, but we would have like Halloween parties and like we'd just pull like random people off the street to come hang out and party like we didn't even know them. But that was just how crazy it was back then, you know. Uh, but of course, you know, there's a lot of other stuff and substances and sure sorts of other stuff going on, you know. So, yeah, it was a wild time for sure. You keep in contact with those guys? Uh, I see Dave every once in a while. Um, uh, I keep in contact with Rico. I've been talking to Rico lately. Um, but as far as Dave, I see him every every once in a while. Yeah, uh, at a show and stuff. But that's pretty much as far as it really goes. I remember I was at a show at the Showcase Theater once, and I don't remember who was playing, but Dave was there. I don't think they played though. <clears throat> um, but that motherfucker jumped <laughs> off the top of the goddamn balcony <laughs> into the crowd. Like, I don't, I think it was like mid set of some band. And you know, wet, that guy is probably 98 pounds. Yeah. If <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, you know, that's not too bad on the crowd, but. I have a, a, a few like very distinct memories from the showcase. Uh, one of them being the first time I saw the Addicts play. That was fucking awesome. Um, and then, of course, some of the shows that we played there. But that that night where Dave jumped off the balcony, I was just like, he's lucky the crowd didn't just part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he didn't eat shit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, those guys always a reputation of being, you know, wow. off the fucking wall and everything. <laughs> yeah. I I keep wondering if those guys are gonna reform. I know he's got another band. Uh, yeah. I think they're doing uh the fiends right now. Right, right. Uh which is cool that, you know, still involved in music. He's a chef these days, right? I think so. Last I heard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's pretty cool to see some of like the old school bands like that, you know, like what they're up to these days. Right. Um, and seeing some of those bands reform, like um, kind of the first thing that like got my attention was when the virus reformed. Yeah. And I was like, that's pretty cool. I wasn't expecting that. Um, and then, you know, they put out one record and then uh, I think it's just like a split EP or something since then. Yeah. Um, and everything I've heard, I thought was cool. Um, I know they had like a little bit of lineup changes and shit, but it seems to be pretty normal these days. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're they're amazing too, man. Um, we Did had to play with them. Yeah, we had the pleasure of playing with them in, I think it was New Mexico. Uh huh. Um, yeah, man, it was fucking, it was badass. And it's badass because I have a fucking virus tattoo on my arm. So yeah. it's kind of like, oh, here's a bucket checklist check mark now. So, yeah, it was it was fucking cool. You know, it was it was really cool to be able to jam with those guys. And um, I think they were on tour for their new record. So they were playing a lot of the new stuff. And I was just blown away, man. Yeah. Yeah, there's some video on uh, some videos on YouTube from some shows where they were playing a lot of that shit. Mm -hmm. uh, and the band seemed like, you know, thriving, a lot of energy. Right. Uh, I love Paul on vocals. The first time mm -hmm. I saw that band, again, like that San Diego show when we played with them, uh, Paul was on vocals. And then shortly right. after that, he left the band. Mm -hmm. um, but I love Paul's vocal style. You know, yeah. being, you know, as a vocalist, like, I don't know if, if it's the same for you as it is for me, but anytime I hear a band, the first thing is like, how are the vocals? Yeah. You know, well, and if the vocals are good, then if there's anything else about the record that I'm not like stoked on, I can like power through. Right. You know, right. Uh, right. But 
yeah, man, I love Paul's vocal style. Uh, just there's that melodic sensibility with it still sounding really aggressive. Yep, exactly. Yep, it sounds great. I love it. I love Paul's vocals. I love the record, the record that they put out, you know, with Martino on uh, on Voltage. It was really, really good. Yeah, I'm hoping that those guys are going to put out another full length soon. Yeah, that would be sweet, man. Uh, I'll definitely. I would definitely be stoked on that. And if they... I saw that they're uh, confirmed for CY Fest, so mm -hmm. they're going to be in your backyard real soon. So that's cool. Yep. Yep. As long as everything goes as planned, and we don't have more cancellations later this year or whatever. But right. Yep. That's the that's the big worry, man. Is the unknown right now. Right. Yeah, they're supposed to play that Fire Rock show too. So uh, if that all comes together, man, it'll be cool. It'll be my first time seeing those guys. <laughs> since the early 2000s so wow cool yeah that would be really cool uh on that topic before we wrap it up we're getting i know we've been going for a little while now um what is one band that you hope to play with uh so like play with like on a personal level yeah like for Dead 77, for you guys to either do a single show with or maybe even a tour with, like, who's one band that you're like, man, if we could play with those guys, it'd be just the best? I would say, honestly, for me, it would be um, definitely Cox Bar. Just cool. I've seen them play at Rebellion, and it was just fucking phenomenal. Um, they, like... I've never seen such a unison group of people like singing along to every song. You could feel the floor like shaking underneath you. Like it's, it was just fucking amazing. Um, that, that, that would be phenomenal. Definitely. I can only imagine like the crowd, like singing along. Yeah. And you're talking like, this is, what they call it at rebellion it's called the empress the empress ballroom i think okay and fucking just huge and they even have like a top row like so you could sit on a balcony and watch as well and so like this room gets to capacity when they play and it's just like everyone's just chanting and dancing and like i said you could feel the like the floor shaking from everyone um, so they, they would definitely be like my, I would love to do a show with them. Would you say that's the best show you've ever seen? Uh, one, one of the best. Yeah. One of the best. Um, the damned was great. Uh, it's just great to see like these older bands, you know, that you're, you would never imagine like, oh shit, we're on like the same festival as them. This is crazy. So, you know. It's an experience. It's amazing how many of the older bands are still around. Yeah. Exactly. Like, even if they're not, you know, with the same lineup, a lot of those bands, like they've got a couple of younger guys in the band now. Mm -hmm. um, but who fucking cares? Like you're still hearing those classic songs. And, you know, from most of the guys that were in it from the beginning, which is awesome. Right. Um, and, you know, like, as I get older, I think about like, as a vocalist, you know, when is there going to be a stopping point? Because this is not the type of music where like, you can get up there and softly sing it and please <laughs> it on. Like, you got to be balls to the walls, you know? Yeah. And I'm sure, you, you know, you've uh, thought about that same thing, but then I see, you know, some bands like the Exploited, they're still going. Wadi is still out there crushing it yeah you know and another good example of somebody that has obviously prioritized their health you know he's had right. a lot of health issues but he's bounced back from it and he's still getting out there like i just saw a few like last week i think that they announced a tour with total chaos and crow mags you know it's like that guy it doesn't look like he has any interest in stopping anytime soon. Right. Right. You know, and so I, you know, I'll be 40 this year, so I'm getting a little older, but I'm like, can I, can I keep doing this? Like 
until I'm 60? Like, is it going to be just as badass then? Like, <laughs> what it is the future of this going to be like for me? All you can do is just try, man, and see what happens. Yeah, I, I think I love, like... I love it. Like you said, it's, it's an output, right? And man, um, you know, there's days where I'm like, oh, do I really want to keep doing this, man? But then I'm like, once it's happening and everything's in motion, I'm like, oh, this is so fun. You know? I'll tell you this, man, like, uh, you don't get any, you get out what you put into something. Exactly. And there's always going to be ups and downs. Yep. Uh, but the music is already a part of you. That's not going to change. Right. Uh, like I was saying earlier, what I learned through talk therapy, like, it's a non-negotiable <laughs> in my life. Right. And if you are so connected to it at this stage, that's, that's not going to change. And that output is healthy for you. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I think as long as it's a balancing act, just like everything else in life. Um, but if you're focusing on your mental health, your physical health, your emotional health, you're going to be not just a better human being, but a better artist. Right. So, yeah, I think I, I, struggle with that same question a lot over the years especially you know doing shit outside of the havoc like uh in other projects you know and and it's like we've been the, the type of band that has like always wanted to strive for the next level of things right and like i am not the same vocalist now that i was when we formed the havoc and it's it's apparent listening to the old recordings versus the new ones right. um but had i <clears throat> uh accepted that defeatist mentality i wouldn't be where i am today not just as uh an artist and a vocalist but just as a human being right. so yeah man i think uh pushing forward is important you know like it's part of the human experience growth right exactly exactly i agree 100 percent um Okay, I got a couple more questions, and then uh, I think we're going to call it. Um, early Misfits or early Danzig? Oh, dang. That one's hard, man. <laughs> right? That's hard. Uh, I'm going to go with Danzig. And early one i i just love his style man um it felt more real and less you know the whole gist of like the misfits was the horror thing yeah so i feel like danzig's project was just more real um less horror i guess less gimmicky yeah exactly yeah yeah so for me it was more of like it was more of like a serious approach to it and i like that uh that doesn't mean I don't enjoy early Misfits because Walk Among Us was fucking phenomenal. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I had never heard a vocalist like that before. So it was, you know, it was nice that here was the Misfits, someone who doesn't scream and yell for everything. And he just made music, made punk music sound so great, man. Um, the Misfits definitely, you know, Walk Among Us was a great record and, um, that was my first time hearing someone not screaming on a record, I guess you could say. Yeah, because he definitely is not screaming in those records. I mean, right. there's, a, there's a little edge of aggression on certain phrases. Right. But mostly it's that, you know, evil Elvis, yeah. soulful, spooky voice the whole time. Right. Yeah, uh, Danzig 1 through 4, each of those records has so many highlights for me mm -hmm. uh and you know they they veer more to the metal and rock side of things than punk obviously mm -hmm. um and i think that's one thing that i really appreciate about uh those records versus the misfits like you listen to the early misfits shit and it's just like how the fuck did they record this it sounds terrible yeah. You know, but it has character 
and that character plus the gimmick right. and the vocals just it gives it that appeal and it, and for me it just it grew on me right but the first time hearing Danzig the first Danzig record there's so much clarity in everything although I'm a picky son of a bitch and I hate the snare drum in that record <laughs> uh, but I but again it's one of those things like I can move beyond that right if, right. if I love the vocals and I love the guitar work in that record too uh but yeah, it you know it just shows kind of that that natural progression of Danzig's career. And by the time he got to those records, Danzig one through four, you could tell that he was just such a developed singer at that point. Yeah, he knew his own voice. Uh, not that he wasn't singing with confidence before in the Misfits, but it's just youthful and you know. Yeah. No fucks given, just right. It's just raw. Right. Uh, you know, whereas Danzig was just more developed, and I, I just appreciate that <clears throat> era more. Uh, last question What is your biggest hope for the future of the punk rock scene? What would you like to see happen between now and, let's say, the next 10 years? Uh, as in, uh, I guess I don't understand the question. So, so like, as in, like, what do so, I want to let do? Let me break it up this way. Yeah. Like, would you rather see more older bands reunite and more fans come out of the woodwork, kind of like a strength in numbers thing? Mm -hmm. Or would you rather see more of, like, a unified scene when it comes to divisive topics, uh, you know, like, do any of those things really matter to you? Or like, uh, are you more interested just in like seeing things grow for the scene because it directly affects your band and, and the growth of your band? Or, you know, what, what would you like to see happen? Um, I think I would like to see, um, I guess more growth opportunity for bands. Um, I feel like a lot of groups are kind of clicky and um, it kind of shuts out some potentially really good bands, you know? Um, same with, I mean, our band, I would, I, I prefer a diverse crowd. Um, you know, everyone is invited to enjoy our music. You don't have to be into punk. You don't have to be a punk rocker. I mean, there's no judgment here. We don't, you know, our music is very, um, robust when it comes to lyrics um they don't you know it's it's centered more towards how people are feeling or what people go through um so yeah uh for definitely for us it would be you know we want our scene to grow you know together and you know have more bands that are coming up you know coming up have more opportunities um to continue the unity and the growth of the scene, right? Because if it's the same bands over and over again, so what kind of growth are we seeing, right? Yeah. So I would love, you know, for the scene to grow as in, you know, creating more opportunities for younger bands, um, you know, or giving that band that is actually really good, giving them that opportunity that they deserve to, you know, pull in more people. Um, because it is strength in numbers, right? Our scene is only successful if we pull people in, right? Uh, so that's that's definitely a big a big thing for us is that we're here to make, you know, we're here to have people listen to our music and to make our scene grow bigger, right? Um, and that's that's the biggest thing to us is if we're given an opportunity by a bigger band, we take full advantage of it, man. So that's like, we're, because in a sense, they're giving us the opportunity to present something to their people, right? Their crowd. So we make it 100% on stage, you know, we give it all we got, whether it's me throwing water at people, you know, whatever it takes to pull in, to pull in the crowd, or to pull in, you know, prospective people that probably never heard of us or heard of punk rock or 
you know, they just so happened to walk by the venue and heard the music, right? So. I love that perspective. Um, and you use a key word that I think really sums it up. And you said clicky. You know, when we were active in the early 2000s, that shit was rampant in the scene. You know, yeah. like it was always about the cool guy factor. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, l this is not an exaggeration. Like, people would go around asking, like, do you think that that guy's more 77 or 82? <laughs> like, I remember that. Who the fuck cares? Like, why, why does that even matter? You know, uh, or, you know, oh, I don't like that guy because I don't like his vest. Right. Okay. So let me get this straight. To you, punk rock is a members only club. And unless you're wearing a members only jacket, you don't belong. Is that what you're telling me? Right. And like, I think that goes against the very foundation of punk rock. It's about that individuality. Right. Uh, and, and having that independent, free thinking mind and spirit. Right. And, you know, I, I see on Instagram a lot, like people bashing younger kids that are obviously getting into some different subculture, not just punk rock, you know? Um, and they're like, why the fuck are they, you know, wearing that band or mm. why is their hair like that or whatever? It's like, dude, that person's being an individual and they have the balls to post who they are on social right. media, open to all the criticism that the world is gonna throw at them. What the fuck are you doing? Yep. You know, other other than being a troll. Right, exactly. You, you know, and I just, that was a huge reason why I wanted to, like, just get the <laughs> fuck away from the punk scene by, like, 2006, because there were so many uh, politics within the scene, and it had become so much more about fashion than music. Right. And like, I, I just couldn't understand, like, why is it that to, to, you know, so many people liking the most rare band is more cool than just being an individual? Right. Like, why is that your priority? If that's your priority, then you don't have a strong grasp on what the punk rock subculture is actually about. And you should just get the fuck out. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll get off my soapbox. I don't mean to stand <laughs> here and, and no, I mean, I am mighty or anything, but I, I agree. I mean, to punk rock standard, I mean, I don't think I live up to it. Right. I mean, I wear all black and I have a pretty normal haircut. So, right. I mean, I don't judge anyone on, their studs or whatever right um uh, i make uh, you know i make music so that people will eventually sing along to it that's my ultimate goal as an artist man it ain't money it ain't fame because there is none of that in the punk scene unless you know you're someone way up there uh, but yeah my goal in in being in this band is to create a sing-along why because when i was growing up going to shows it was like fuck everyone is singing along and like it was just like i wonder what that feeling is like right and so for me that's the purpose of this band is to eventually have these kids coming into our scene or the older people anyone anyone singing along to our songs because that what's the best way to give i mean at a show to give you know the signs of unity is everyone singing along right because we're all united at that point. So that, that, that's been, that's my main goal in Dead 77 is we've created these songs that uh, instrumentally are somewhat simple, but complex, but the lyrics are sing-along lyrics. And I think that's forever gonna happen because in my head, 
you know, growing up, I always wanted to sing along with the bands, you know? So for me, that's my goal in Dead 77 is to eventually have that crowd singing our songs back to us, you know? I don't think as an artist, there's any better feeling in the world than to know that kids are singing your songs. Totally. I think, you know, what you said, that's a key ingredient. Having those vocals that can be, you know, they're memorable and you want to sing along to them. Right. And especially since you're focused as a lyricist on writing songs about the importance of self-care or mental health or getting through trauma or whatever, like those messages are going to resonate mm -hmm. far more than just the music or the images. Right. And I think, you know, it's fair to say that in punk rock, music and image, they go hand in hand. Right. Uh, but I love that you guys aren't focusing on the image to the point where it's like, well, we have to look like this, you know, in, in order to be punk rock enough. Right. Because like you said, you know, you're letting the music do the talking. Right. And I'm glad that there are more bands that are taking that approach. Uh, for me, like that was <clears throat> one of the things that attracted me to punk rock from the get go was not just the music, but the image. Right. You know, and I think uh, every band has to identify exactly what their image is because it's part of the branding of punk rock, right? Um, and then just sticking to your guns, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and I think that's why some bands in, in the genre have been so successful and are still around. Uh, casualties are a great example of that even total chaos is a great example of that it's like you know they know what their image is they're not going to veer away from that right because they recognize that consistency is key right uh that's why acdc is still so successful right you know it, like you could argue oh angus young is too old he's been way too old for way too long to be wearing a schoolboy uniform it's like no that's part of the gimmick that's <laughs> yeah. part of the image that is what you know it resonates with their fan base right and they don't change things up because they know that that consistency is what's key for them right and i agree with you every band should have a gimmick right um ours i mean we kind of have a gimmick, but it's not like anything that would be robust enough to be like, oh, that's, you know, but technically, like most of us, like in our pictures, we're all wearing black, right? Yeah. Uh, on stage, most of the time, the rule is all black, sure. uh, you know, and I mean, do I, that's probably our image, man. Jean jackets and, you know, tight jeans and leather. So it's always... It's always a black on black combination, right? Yeah. Uh, we try not to switch from that. Uh, you know, another thing is we're all, you know, of Hispanic descent or, you know, Latinos or Latinx. So it's, uh, we're all, you know, from some part of Latin America. And uh, so it, that's, that's our gimmick. You know, we're, yeah. we're Latin American or, you know, we're Latinos or Latinx and, we wear all black on stage. You know, that's, that's our, that's our gimmick, I guess, if you want to call it that, which it is, I guess, you know, cause we're all matching in a sense. Right. Um, I think I'm going to look for one more question or comment here from uh, whoever's tuned in to address and then we're going to call it. David Hernandez, Empress Ballroom holds 2,000 capacity. Shout out to David Hernandez. He's a good dude. Yeah, he's awesome. He's like the he's like the unspoken member of Dead 77. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, Uh, 
I'm not seeing any. I'm seeing more comments than questions. Let me check one more thing here. Sure. Dang, no one. Oh, here. Questions? <laughs> okay, last one from uh, Meltbox. <clears throat> it's revisiting an earlier topic, but he asks, "How did you end up living at the Clit House?" <laughs> Um, I think my buddy Brian lived there originally, and so he lived there. So we would, I was already hanging out there because he lived there. And then I think he might have ended up, he ended up moving to the east, and he's like, oh, do you want to take over my room? And I was like, all right. So it was like a simple transaction of my buddy left and I moved in. Right on. How long were you there for? <sighs> Dude, honestly, I don't even remember, man. <laughs> those fucking, those days were such a blur. Like, uh, I know that it ended in like 09, but I couldn't tell you exactly when it started. Might have been like 07. Gotcha. But yeah, man, I mean, fast times. Like I said, I don't, most of it's a blur. Most of it, I don't even know how I kept up with the job. It was, it was insane. Right on. Uh, okay, well, just to wrap things up, uh, tell fans, anybody that's watching this, where they can find you online and your new record uh, and anything else that you want to say or promote. Sure. So you can find us on Dead 77 Official on Instagram, uh, Dead 77 on Facebook. Uh, you can find our music on all digital platforms um so please give us give our new record a listen um i think anyone and everyone could relate to at least one piece of a song on that record um and please learn the lyrics learn the chorus and you know next time we hit your town you're ready to sing along with us and and get wild um because you know for sure we we definitely try to put on some showmanship when it comes to jamming on stage. Um, again, our album's available on all streaming networks and um, Spotify is a big one for us. Also, uh, you know, the if you're looking for a vinyl or CD, uh, Dismantled will have them here within the next six weeks. And um, please support your, you know, DIY record label. They need the help. Um, also, we'll be releasing for any EU fans out there. We'll have a release with Voltage as well um, as to when we're still trying to figure that date out. Um, and then for CD releases, we will be doing a, a CD release with Kids Union Records. Um, so please, please stay tuned. Um, there's going to be way more stuff coming. Um, uh, but yeah, thank you, Jason, for having me and talking with me. It's amazing. It's been a blast. Yeah, no problem, man. Glad that you were uh, able to be a part of this. And, uh, you know, I'm excited that uh, we're doing something different, something new. Right. And, uh, to anybody else that's watching that's in a band, if you would like to be a part of this, message us. Um, we're featuring new music on Mondays, hopefully every Monday if we can. It just kind of depends on what's out there, who's releasing what and when. Um, and those songs are going to be re are going to be featured on our Spotify playlist, uh, Rebellion Noise 2022. You can find that by navigating to the Havocs Spotify profile, or you can just search for the playlist directly on Spotify. Right now we have Dead 77, top of the list three tracks from there and anytime we feature a new band their tracks are going to be moved to the top but we're still going to continue to feature the other bands that have already been on the playlist uh and before we close out here uh thanks to jorge for being here taking the time out of your day i know that you've got a lot on your plate uh i can't wait to see all that dead 77 is going to do in the future, especially just this year ahead. Um, and again, shout out to Dismantle Records, Voltage Records, Kids Union Records, and you guys, 
for the punks. Yep. Thank All you. All right, Jorge. Thanks, Thank man. You. Bye. We'll catch you next time. Yep, definitely. Thank you, everyone. All right. So I'm just going to play us out here with uh, On Repeat. This is the song that features David Rodriguez. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, then you're probably new to the scene. Uh, but he's got uh, a few other bands. He's got a few bands. The Casualties, obviously. And then Crumb Bums and Starving Wolves. Uh, which we've got a Starving Wolves song on this playlist also. Uh, and they their newest record is incredible. So check that out if you haven't heard it yet. If he's watching, what's up, dude? Uh, so yeah, here we go. On repeat. Later. Until next time, guys.